So now we're going to do it in, in English so that the people who don't understand French can pick up a few things. So we have with us today David. He's French, but he speaks English, right? Well, I'm trying to. Oh, you're trying to. Okay. I, very, sounds like you understand, though. Yeah. Okay. And he's been here for 10 years, so I don't think he will have any problem with it. So, David, uh, please um, let us know what you do here. So, um, right now I'm doing a startup yeah. called uh, hirebooth.com. Uh, it should be displayed on the screen. And I have a hire, second... Uh, hire, like hire, hire, like like hiring, and mm -hmm. booth, like a, like a booth where you would sit. Oh, by the way, do you, a question I forgot to ask in French. Do, do you get a commission if someone is hired? Uh, not right now. But no. Okay. Uh, depending, well. Maybe that's not the it's something model. we thought of, but uh, we, we see how, how it will how it's received by the yeah <laughs> the customers. I, I asked it right away because I said maybe I'm gonna forget again. <laughs> okay, so go ahead. Uh, sorry about the interruption. So what did you? Uh, so this is a technology that helps people. Uh, uh, filter uh, programmers yeah. before they, they interview them. Okay. So you, you give the programmers a programming test, like a task that yeah. you would take. Do you, pick, do you pick the name of the program, like uh, Java, yeah, C++? Yeah, you, you have a variety of languages. We support 12 languages like Java, C++, Python, Perl, Ruby. Or the most common use? Yeah, C Sharp. All the Whatever the employer wants to test. Yeah, and uh, we have a, a wide variety of tests too, like different type of algorithms that people mm -hmm. have to implement. Mm -hmm. And so, and often this is the tests are realistic. They, mm -hmm. they emulate real, real work uh, type of situation. Yeah. And depending on the performance of the program that's written by the user, they are given a rating. Mm -hmm. uh, and that rating will represent their, their, their performance. Their yeah. Okay. And based on that, the employer decide if they want to talk to them further. Yeah. So the next step for an employer would be to, to talk to the one that have performed the best. So if, the per if for example, he, he, he has uh, 10 people take the test, he can talk to the top five in, the, in order uh, of performance. So this way, he doesn't waste time talking to everybody. Okay. So that's and the employer problem. pays you for that? So yeah, there's a monthly fee oh, a to monthly use fee. our resources, the website, the test. Uh, it's a membership website? Yes, yeah, a membership website. It's monthly. Okay. And, uh, that's good. If you have a lot of members, then you you don't have to worry about money for a while. <laughs> okay. Also, it's convenient for companies because they to, don't have to, to pay worry per about interview. It's like and yeah, they, they typically they want a license that covers a period of time, so yes. one month or one year. Yeah. So the, this, this way they don't have to worry about it. Yeah, that's mostly for convenience for them too. Convenience, okay. Yeah. Um, the, the, this is something that I just wonder is how many language the average person knows. Let's say a company uses only two languages and typically most companies they ask for two languages yeah most companies use two languages yeah and most uh, programmers know at least two also for programmers it's hard to say uh, from from my experience most of them they stick to one yeah uh, typically java java is extremely yeah. uh, represented yeah or c plus plus for performance uh, however most of them they know more than one they Often no Python as well or okay. Ruby. So you know at least two yourself. Oh yeah, I know at least two. Typically, you always know a compiled language like or semi-compiled like Java or C plus mm plus -hmm. and a scripting language like Python or Ruby. Okay. So, so these these new languages that come up, you get, you learn them along the path of your career. Uh, typically, yeah, and there's the first one you learn in school, and then. All the languages, there's not much difference between them. It's mostly syntactic. Uh, the 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 whole parad the, the paradigms paradigm the paradigm yeah paradigms are the same. Yeah. So they they exactly the same. So okay. Uh, so there's not much to learn except the different syntax. So that's why most people master a language in no time once they know one. Oh okay okay okay. So basically, it's just a matter of having the logic in the head, and yeah. then mostly it's a, it's a matter of being well trained logically yeah if, you, if you're at least with one language i'm not i'm excluding uh, purposefully the kind of higher order languages like haskell or camel mm -hmm. which are completely different in their thinking so this is typically a real new language yeah but they are not that that widespread in terms of, of demand for employers 
Okay. And how would you test, uh, for example, a project manager? They don't need to really know the language. They just need to manage the project. Well, for a for, for project manager, this is... I don't think my platform is appropriate. Uh, oh, it's them. not really to be tested for that. Yeah, because it's uh, project manager is mostly a social uh, soft uh, manager. skill type of. Uh, He's a manager. Yeah, so it's more like soft skills, and uh, the soft skills. Uh, it's not your site. Uh, yeah, it's not uh, uh, me. It's more like technical skills uh, as assessment. Okay, okay, but they they need to know a little bit. I mean, to be able to manage um, software engineers, they need to know how long it's gonna take each person to do a program or something like that? Not necessarily. Some I've seen some manager just ask the engineers. How much do you think is going to take you? Yeah, because everyone's different. Some Not everyone works at the same speed. So and it makes sense to, to let engineers come with their own... Uh, their own time yeah. frame? Oh, okay, okay. Now, uh, talking about time, is your test uh, timed? Yes, it is. So by default, our system will suggest uh, a duration. Yeah. Depending on the test you selected, uh, but you can of course change it yourself. You yeah. can adjust it if you if you want to give more. Or oh, less okay. Time. The person taking the test can extend uh, it. The the person uh, the company giving the test to the. Oh, can extend it. Yeah, can change it for the. Uh, okay. They so they give uh, unfair advantage to some people. I mean, if some oh, people they, have an hour and the other person has. If they extend it, it's for everybody. Huh? If they extend it, it's for everybody. Oh, they extend it for everyone? Yeah, it's, it's not for one person in particular, but for all of them. Okay, okay. And once one person has passed the test, you cannot change the duration. Okay, okay. Okay, that's... that's in order to, to, to avoid unfairness. Do, do you have people who have to look in the book to do a, a program? It doesn't matter if they do yeah. it open book? Yeah, it's, it actually it's a good thing to do open, open book. Uh, because nowadays, if you work in a job, you have open book. Yeah, you have Google. And Google, you can search whatever you need. Yes. What matters is not really what you know, but how fast you How you to can find learn. the information. Yeah, how to find information, how fast you can learn. What you know is always limited at some point in time. And there's so many APIs and libraries and languages and things that exist. They that go on Google and look for it. Yeah, nobody knows. Uh, you spend your time always looking for something and kind of grasping information left and right. Yeah. I think that nowadays that's pretty much how a developer is. It's the oh, ability to find but, information. But if everyone has access to information on Google, how do you going to know who is the best? Well, the problem is given like, uh, for example, uh, I have two cars uh, driving this from this position to this mm -hmm. position. Can you compute uh, what's the shortest path? Something like yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. If you type that on Google, you won't find anything. Oh, you won't, okay. Because you have to find what's the algorithm that's used on mm -hmm. what should be the right solution. Oh, okay. If you know the name of the algorithm, you could look it up and look for an implementation of it. But um, then if you already know that, that means you know what you're lot. doing. You already need to know what you need to know. So whether you can program it yourself or look it up doesn't matter because you know how to find the solution. D'accord. Okay. So, and and the, the since it's programming, it's an international language, right? The test can be taken. Yeah. In, in India or in France, you don't know the, the language? However, the test description is given in English. Okay. We could make it in several languages. However, we feel that for programming, it's important to know English. Oh, yes, yes, so because uh, if they're going to come to America and work here, they better know a little bit of English. Or even in France, because typically, if you're looking, again, if you're going to search on the web... It has to be in English? There's a lot of resources in English, a lot more in English than in any other language. Oh, I see. So uh, you better so know English then. So it's always very useful, and most programmers, they end up knowing English because a lot of the languages, they look English already in, in their wording. Oh, okay. Uh, they were invented in the United States. Yeah, and also the for loop, for, and if, then, all these words that appear, that appear in the language, often they're oh, English. Oh, yes, if and when, yeah. And are these languages also in French? Yes. Uh, I don't know if there's any no, French. Uh, no. I, I know Camel is initially French language, uh, but I don't know the syntax. I think it's very minimal. Is, is there a language that's typically French, like Fortran? Yes. Fortran, yeah. It was French. I suppose. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, it sounds French. It's, uh, it's it sounds French. Uh, yeah, it sounds French and it's pretty old. But nobody though. uses it now anymore. I'm not sure. I'm not sure, actually. Uh, I, have, I have no demand for it uh, on no, my website. No. So it so it's probably dying out because it's too complicated. It was mostly for, for from what I know, for mathematics uh, research yeah. or doing people doing very intensive mathematics or meteorology too. Mm -hmm. But I think what language is used for accounting is still 
Is there a new one now? I don't know. It used to be COBOL. Yes, I don't know but what, what is it, it is now? nowadays. You don't know? No, I don't know. Okay. <laughs> It's it's funny. I learned COBOL when I was younger, but uh, I forgot everything because it's something you don't use, you forget, right? Okay. It's like it's like a language. <laughs> but I, I was wondering if there was a new one nowadays for that for accounting. I have no idea. I mean, yeah. you work with accounting firms. Or the really the popular ones nowadays are really uh, JavaScript, yeah, Java, and then Ruby, Python, they are okay. and C plus plus very popular. Okay, uh, but it's mostly. If you look in the valley, there's a lot of companies that are hiring a lot are internet companies or yeah. semiconductors. Yeah. Uh, all these kind of or internet or iPhone apps. Yeah. There's a, these are really the booming areas uh, yeah. that are hiring. And and I heard you can take a course in 24 hours and learn how to do apps. Is that true? Uh, I'm not sure. I mean, is it possible to your to your knowledge? Depends the how much the person knows beforehand. Oh, right. I okay. mean, but someone that's already a programmer for 10 years that takes a course for apps, he can probably do in, in 24 hours, get the idea of the APIs and start yeah. programming. But someone, someone that never API. programmed at all, there's no way in 24 hours they're going to start. Okay. I mean, they'll get, uh, they'll go through the course and be able to do exactly that app, but if, you, if they want to write like another app like Angry Birds, yeah. they would have no idea where to start. And because the programming, there's, I mean, there's a lot of, behind it in terms oh, of logic and no because one time i was offered to learn to do apps online <laughs> for 24 hours and i didn't know if that's true or not but yeah, and it's true for people that have you can learn very fast if you already know a lot in terms of programming and you do it on a daily basis okay but for that other than that it's uh, it will take more time do you do you also write apps i use i wrote one uh, a while ago yeah what year. was it about for like a Twitter client, a small client uh, that was uh, for Twitter mm -hmm. to, 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 to run on the phone and it uh, was an interesting experience. Um, so you wrote the app and and put it, uh, tried on, to put on it Apple on Apple iPhone? Uh, it was uh, for Android uh, and uh, for iPhone. For Android? Yeah. Okay. But it, it wasn't very successful to be honest. So because I mean, not uh, too many users? Yeah, there was already, so the, the, the market was very crowded. I just did it as an experiment for myself to learn how to do an app. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's not something I pursued as a business uh, venture because there was no there was no future for that really? little app. Really? I mean, there was already, the app market for the Twitter client was extremely crowded. Yeah. There was already some big players. One actually got acquired since then, so. So yes. it was not really. Uh, but is it true there's some money to be made uh, when you sell an app if it's a successful app? I mean, if you sell the app, yes, yeah, not I mean, for free apps. If, if you sell the app, you're going to make money if you sell a million copy of one app. Uh, but many apps are free. And yes. they, for example, if you look at Angry Birds, yeah, it's a free app. Yeah. Although you have some content that you can download and you have to pay, but you also saw like a, a commercial on the free app. There's an advertisement. Advertisement can pay a lot of money, actually. Because mm -hmm. that was the, the route I was taking for my Twitter client. And actually, the returns are pretty high on the... Mm. So I'm supposing that an app like uh, Angry Birds that has so many uh, users, they probably make a lot more money by going for advertising than uh, selling it $1 each. I have a, an idea 